morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 410 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryomedian Network. Yeah, sassy shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Uh, there we go. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver. Pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Whew, we have a metric shit ton of news in a very small amount of time, so um, this might be speed beavering today. Should be fun. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Grizzly. I guess that's the thing. <laughs> speed reading, speed beavering. I don't know. <laughs> How is your mental health today, sir? Uh, mental health is, uh, you know, um, not not bad. I don't feel terrible or anything like that. The uh, the the gray gray weather's kind of the took Lola out for a walk earlier, and it was pouring the whole time. <laughs> Can't mm. get her in the bath. Won't come out of the rain. <laughs> <laughs> she was splashing in puddles this morning too. So. Uh, someone left the pup out in the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, kids, uh, things are good here. Um, okay, that's good. Fast forward. Uh, okay, so much stuff. Number one, Oilers. Yeah, that okay. Mm, that was. Uh, that was a stunning victory Saturday night, and I was like, holy crap, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. They they were on a mission. Yeah, they they have all the momentum. Uh, they're not going down without a fight, and I think they're going to take it tonight. I really do. I really do believe they're going to win tonight. If anything is like the last three games, then yeah. I mean, yeah. Th th they've been a freaking freight train. Well, they saw Bob, Bob Vrovsky when, when they scored eight goals on him. They're like, yeah, we know how to score on him now. So <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I really do believe that they're going to do it tonight. Uh, I, I'll be surprised. I would be surprised if Florida won. And that's uh, just the way uh, Edmonton's playing. It, you know, it took them a little time to find their wheels in this, in this round, but they've got it now. I think they've yeah. got all the momentum and... McDavid is bound and determined to win a Stanley Cup, and I think it's going to happen this year. I really do. Mm -hmm. Now, this would be um, last time the Edmonton Oilers were in the final 2006. They also got to Game 7 against yeah. the Carolina Hurricanes, and it was not the desired outcome because the oh. Cup hasn't been in Canada in what, like, something like 33 years now or something? 1993, last time. Yeah, so it's 1993. So, yeah, not, yeah, sorry, 1993, not 33 years, but that's a long time. And uh, nobody has come back from down, being down 3 nothing in a Stanley Cup final since 1942, and I will not say the team because I do not want to jinx anything. Mm-hmm. Only mention which team it is tomorrow. 
<laughs> Connor McDavid has 42 points going in, which is just six shy of Gretzky's record, which is like really insane when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> of, that was a different NHL. Yes. Yes, Gretzky absolutely. Has said, he said he, he said, you know, these the players today are just so much better than when he played, and it's true. They mm -hmm. all are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and there's like, you know, lots of, lots of stories uh, because, uh, you know, Edmonton did not start out with the current coach. No. They had a pretty, pretty, pretty rough start to the season. Um, so this uh, guy, Chris Knoblock, apparently was in the American Hockey League uh, in November mm -hmm. and brought in. And it happens that um, he, uh, when uh, Connor McDavid and Connor Brown were playing with uh, the Erie Otters in the Ontario Hockey League. He was their coach then. Okay. So he, he has some experience. Well, and way to get the best out of someone, eh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, yeah. And, and of course, Skinner, the goaltender, mm -hmm. who's an Edmonton boy, mm -hmm. who got an assist. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Didn't I? Yeah. It was like everybody's getting in on the party in that, in that last match. That that match had anything. A disallowed goal from yeah. Florida, an assist by the goaltender after an absolutely amazing around-the-back save with the yeah. stick. Yeah, that was... Uh... Behind-the-back pass. Save and pass. It was... Uh... The puck was in the blue. He, he was not going to be scored on there. Jeez. He's determined. He's really what determined. What the heck, man? I, I think, I really do believe this is their night. I really do. I'd be, sh like I said, I'd be shocked if Florida won tonight. Mm -hmm. I think Edmonton has all the momentum. It does. And they are bound and determined to win this. So, yeah. They've, they've got medmentum. <laughs> um, Rogers Place is sold out in Edmonton. 18,000 fans will be there. Uh, there's the games also, in Florida. <laughs> yep. But they're yeah. going to have a viewing yeah. party there. So it's going to be the biggest watch party. So it's a, it's all sold out. So I'm guessing they have like huge TV screens and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, um, the ice district outside Rogers place, there's a fan park. They're expecting 30,000 people there. And then there's all the pubs and all the, mm -hmm. ooh, going to be partying tonight. <clears throat> and, and of course, uh, cards, come on, man. They'll probably have very low um, viewership in Quebec because it is uh, Saint Jean Baptiste. Yes. Nothing to do, nothing to do with the teams. It's Saint Jean Baptiste. It's yep, you know. exactly. So, uh, bon Saint Jean Baptiste à uh, tous les francophones parce que c'est pas seulement la fête des Québécois mais la fête de les francophones. So, uh, just saying happy uh, Saint Jean Baptiste because it is while it is the Quebec national holiday, it is also the holiday of all French speaking people. Mm -hmm wherever they are. Uh, that part is often forgotten when we're talking about La Saint-Jean. Yeah. So, uh, to uh, à mes Franco-Ontariens, mes Francais quoi, mes franco yukonais mes Acadiens, right? Although the Acadians will be having their day in July come in as well, so. Um, but yes, Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day is going on, so that's big. Also on Friday, because I wasn't here, and thank you so much for uh, holding down the, the lodge, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, with JB. Um, and thank you. Sorry, I couldn't have been there to uh, congratulate you myself, my friend. Uh, but I, you did a great job <laughs> with that TED talk. Um, it was National Indigenous Peoples Day on the, the 21st. Uh, and I had a clip and I don't know, can't remember which words I used when I'm searching for it to be able to bring it back. Um, but there was a um, city TV I think it was, um, uh, oh God, a hit for the news. Right. Um, and it was showing a wide, 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 wide diversity of people that had come together for a walk um, to, to mark the day. And every day, is a good day for truth and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's make that clear. But on that particular day, because what about it? 
I have great respect for the people from Idol No More mm-hmm. because they did a whole bunch of heavy lifting in order to open a lot of eyes. Oh, yes. Right? And from that point on, there's been a flip that's been switched. There are some people that are never going to see it. Right? Period. But the average person is decent. Mm -hmm. The average person would think it's a terrible thing to go into somebody's families and just take the kids out. Yes. And not because they're in any danger, just because you're heathens. Right? So, and all the other dark stuff that motivated what it is that was being done. Um, so to see, to be at this age in my life, you know, to see, there were black people, there were Muslim people, there was just every race that had come together for this walk and to walk with indigenous people on the day because they could have been doing anything. Everybody has lives, Mm -hmm. right? So they made time and that so many did. You could see the, 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 they took a, there was a, like a, I guess an aerial shot and you can see how many people showed up for the walk. It was actually impressive. So, you know, everything in our media is turned towards cynicism these days. I mean, we do it too. <laughs> but um, again, as I keep on saying, if you're paying attention, paying attention, slowly but surely, peace, equality, equity, fairness, love, they are slowly breaking out all around the world. And when I saw that that day, it, it, it brought me a little joy. It brought me a little joy, I have to say. Um, not everybody shares the same view, and that's okay. Not even everybody shares the same view about the day. It's like Canada Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, right? Yeah. Like this. All the views are legitimate. Mm-hmm. Just saying from my perspective, I'm noticing a change. And I think the change is good. I think that more people actually genuinely do care. People that one would suspect would have no reason to care one way or another. Not that they don't care. It's just like, what does it change to my life? Why should I be invested? Because more and more people care. Agreed. I guess. And uh, that's, that's, that's where it starts, right? Because if there are things that are going to change, I mean, this is something that was, was the same thing for us in the gay community. The last thing we needed in the gay community is yet another gay person coming out and saying, hey, we need change. Mm. That helps. But what we needed was our straight allies saying we won't stand for this anymore. Yes. Right? Same thing. Right? The rest of us have to say we will not stand for this anymore. We started down this path of truth and reconciliation. Let's keep going and let's pick up some speed, even. So, um, but I did see that uh, on that day, and I thought that that was. It's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. We're not there yet. We're far from there yet. But snowball rolling down a hill. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, the movement gets bigger and gets better because this needs to be done. All right, Saint Jean National People's Day. Um, so much, so much stuff. Uh, By election in Saint Paul today. Uh, there's a lot of framing going on with this one, kids and cubs. Um, everything from it's absolutely do or die for Justin Trudeau. Um, you know, if the liberals lose this one, he's got to be gone and, um, to stuff like, well, you're getting like some Brian Lilly actually coming out and saying like conservatives are not going to win this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, one, don't be fooled by the rope-a-dope. That's a voter suppression technique. Mm Mm-hmm. Because in this race, given the stakes and given what the conservative machine is, you've got a vote that is highly motivated from the conservative side. By-elections usually have low turnout. 
if your party, the people behind your party are very motivated in a typically low turnout vote, that can change a lot of things very quickly. That will narrow a gap very quickly when compared to the election. Also, the fact that the vote is going to be split 84 ways, 84 candidates on the ballot, that's going to affect something. So there's kind of some hope within the conservative camps that uh, that maybe there will be some ballot confusion and and that will help them, right? You have all the narratives. Whatever the result is whatever the result will be. It's not going to change the standing in the House. Yes, it's going to change the political dynamic because the press are going to run with their narratives afterwards. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, you, and you can see the goalposts moving, right? It's do or die. And now you hear some people saying, oh, it looks like the, the, the liberals will, will win this one. And then today I saw, um, oh, yeah, if the liberals manage to eke out a win, but it isn't at least double digits, that will be a, right? So you have all the tables being set, right? Now, if this is a loss for the liberals, yes. Technically, by elections are not significant. This would be significant because, I mean, this has been a liberal writing forever. Well, forever. For, for a good long while. Anyway, I mean, Carolyn Bennett was in Parliament, I think, for 27 years or something. Um, and polls are suggesting that overall in Ontario, the Conservatives have a 15-point lead. So, of course, but this is downtown Toronto with St. Paul's. Uh, it also depends how strong the NDP candidate will be. So there's a lot of different variables. Um, but again, this is still, because we're more than a year out, the time where if people, for example, liberals decided they wanted to send a message about how displeased they are by not voting, and sitting on their hands, mm -hmm. this would be the time to do it. Right? <clears throat> so, you have all those narratives, but just, again, until the actual, we, until we, at least we get the result of the U.S. election, anything polls is just kicking tires. Because that decision, what's decided down there, will change everything. If it's Biden again, maybe Canadians will feel safer making a change up here because perhaps they think that the Americans will, won't let us go too far. Whatever way they can do that influence-wise. Um, and then there's other people that would think, you know, if Biden wins again, well, gee, that would be the most terrible thing to do would that be would be to go with Polyev then, because I mean we know already by we know already that Biden thinks that Pierre is disloyal. So it wouldn't be a very, very warm relationship. <laughs> the US would go back to probably putting us on ignore for four years. Oh yeah. Yeah. Canada. Well, yeah, it's that little prick. Mm -hmm. Put that on the back burner. <laughs> don't really want to spend time and I'll do my once a year and that's enough. Thanks. <laughs> so if we don't want that type of relationship and then, you know, if it's Trump, then some people might think, Hey, ride the wave. And you know, we elect a PR and another one will, another theory is all of Canada's, you know, sphincters would snap shut. And, was like, ah! <laughs> and then Trudeau <laughs> would say, Ken. Because certainly, well, we're not going to put them two together. <laughs> it's, it's tough to stuff. say what's going to happen in the next election. You don't know, but that's yeah. what I mean. You could, but you can come up with a plausible scenario for each one of those four. You oh, can yeah. make a case without going into extremes like this. You could take some elements and you can make a case for either one of those four points, what it would mean. Mm -hmm. Right? So the narrative is going to be whatever all those media publications have already chosen the narrative will be unless they get a surprise. Like if some media got this, you know, got the Justin Trudeau lost and he's got to go thing all, you know, written already and the liberals win even by two, what is a win is a win. This, this, if it's by two, they'll slightly move it. Right. They said, well, he won, but just by two. So really should have to go. Wouldn't it be better for his party if he, you know, he should do his party a favor, help increase their chances. 
And then if it was like, then if he wins by double digits, it was like, well, he, you know, they're going to make it seem smaller than it was. Right. So, you know, these, but it'll be adjusted, but it'll be the same thing. Right. Of course. It'll be adjusted like this. Oh, well, you know, he won just by 12%. That's like 22% down from the federal election. I mean, if that happens in every writing, then, you know, the conservatives will have 200 and something. All these narratives like this, I'm telling you, you will see <laughs> these, they're already pre written based on the editorial bent of whatever publication is there. So the results, a little bit of grain of salt, this, don't get dizzy from the spin, just sort of like watch it with some popcorn, try to figure out which of these takes will age well and which won't. That's the fun. <laughs> you see people come out and say these things, like, ooh, that's no, that one's not going to age well. <laughs> so, but if we're going to do the Because Democracy is something that you do early, if you're in the St. Paul's area, you know, conservatives love to cheat. This is not new. So, vote. Make sure you vote. Bring friends with you. And vote in numbers too great to manipulate. All right? Okay. Now. Can we get to Doug Ford in the Science Center? Yeah. An article here from the Beaver. That motherfucker. Sorry. Excuse written, my legs. written tongue in cheek, of course, the Beaverton, but uh, yeah. their headline Ontario Science Center closes after roof in danger of collapsing under the weight of Doug Ford's bullshit. Yep. Uh, after standing for 54 years as a testament to mid century architecture and a source of memories for generations of young people, the Ontario Science Center was announced to be closing today, the result of strain on its roof as it struggled to support the added tonnage of Premier Doug Ford's bullshit. The bullshit began to gather on the northern side of Raymond Moriama's famous building just after Ford's re-election when he suggested that the facility was in need of modernization while simultaneously refusing to fund those efforts, said structural engineer Dr. Samuel Constance. By the time he announced a plan to move the whole thing to Ontario Place in order to benefit his real estate donors, the support beams were completely unstable. Eventually, the roof was deemed dangerous, according to report surfaced by Infrastructure Minister Kinga Surma, who managed to deliver this news without laughing, smirking, or during her Tony Soprano impersonation. Miss Surma did her very best to pretend that the roof was an immediate concern <laughs> that warranted the facility closing, going so far as to claim in a press release that it would collapse, that it could collapse in these upcoming summer months, resulted in enough snow accumulation. <laughs> <laughs> Found my nails. Oh man. Oh shit. Premier Ford could not be reached for comment as he recently began his annual 19 week vacation at his cottage. Though he sent several more vans full of his bullshit to the site to be added to the pile on the building's groaning roof in the form of a claim that the province cannot afford to repair the roof while spending more money than it would cost on partisan ads touting his government's alleged successes. At press time, the Science Center summer's children's programming was being cancelled and the bullshit was being scraped off the roof to be sculpted into a 10-story luxury condo by the De, De Gasparis family with prices starting in the low millions. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's as as satirical as it is, and, and that's what the Beaverton is, a sat satirical publication. There's so many nuggets of truth in there. The roof, the roof, the roof has expired. <laughs> it's like just, oh, man. Yeah. On a Friday, mm -hmm. after... The legislature has lifted. Yes. So nobody could ask him a inconvenient in question mm -hmm. during question period. For 18 further mucking weeks. Mm -hmm. By which time they hope it will just go away. Of course. Because like the latest global tyrant or global climate disaster or somebody willing to come to the mic to say something just stupid or outrageous <laughs> will move the media dial, especially with how fast the media and the news cycle moves now. But I mean, it's just uh, mm -hmm. literally Friday 
after the legislature rises with absolutely no opportunity for any immediate accountability whatsoever. I mean, could you be any more? It's almost like you have to freak. It's like somebody said surprised. It's Mm -hmm. like, no, and yet still somehow shocked. Yeah. Right. And not shocked that it did happen. Right. Shocked at the timing yes. and the way, right? Because we knew we had this in the long, long, I mean, he, he's doing this thing. He's clearing the decks for a whole bunch of stuff. Right. So it's like, Hey, look at this. I got this done. That's what he's going to, you know, that's what he's going to run on. But I'm like, it's almost like if you want to know his next move, what would Snidely Whiplash do? And then put that on speed. Yeah. It's literally cartoon villain. That's exactly what it is. And then like the next time he's going to be in front of a podium or a camera or not, he's going to give us a splash of those veneers and give us a little, ah, shucks, folks. And yeah, Well, have you, have you seen his commercial? Uh, yeah. I'm like, there's our tax dollars hard at work spreading his bullshit and the funny thing was the amount of commentary on the commercial is the the people saying you know i tried calling him but he's always busy apparently and he never answers the phone every time i call i'm like yeah why am i not surprised why am i not surprised right. unless your uh, uh name is weston or gus barris or cordellucci he's probably not taking your call probably not <laughs> and um as well, there's been some news that came out today because, well, you know, that Ford's whole thing is we have to build those homes. Mm-hmm. That's why I transferred over $8 billion, valued later on it being $24 billion, of public yeah. wealth. Yes. Because we had to build those homes. iPolitics headline. Ontario's failed to hit every uh, Ontario's failed to hit housing target every month since 2002. Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation data. It's 22 years. <laughs> 22 years. So that's no, successive. No, since 2022. Oh, 2020. Since 2020. Sorry, if, sorry. If uh, that, that, that's probably me. Yeah, I probably screwed that up. 2022. Okay, so two. New, years. Yes, new data from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation shows Ontario once again failed to meet its monthly home starts goal in May. A February 2022 report from the province's Housing Affordability Task Force said Ontario needs to build at least 1.5 million homes by 2031 to meet growing demand. That works out to 150,000 new units each year or 12,500 per month. In May 2024, Ontario added 7,062 units, a 23% increase from the same time last year, but still roughly 5,400 units fewer than the monthly target. In fact, Ontario hasn't once hit its 12,500 target since 2022, CMHC's numbers show. And its its best performance was in September 2022 when 11,236 housing starts were recorded. But since that time, the province has only once exceeded 10,000 units in June 2023 with 10,114 starts. iPolitics Cube Briefing obtained Ontario's historical monthly housing start data from the CMHC dating back to 1990. Despite changes in government, economic ebbs and flows, and interest rate volatility, the province never once hit 12,500 units in a single month over the past 34 years. So, Doug Ford basically promised Ontarians that he would do something that nobody had managed to do in the 26 year, 27 years or so before he promised it. Mm -hmm. That's what he sold Ontarians. And the way he was going to get it done was by shadily transferring public wealth to friends. He says he's out there with those commercials, says, I'm getting it done for the people. No, you're not. 
No, you're not. Mm-hmm. You promised something that you, it looks like you promised you said anything and promised something that was impossible to deliver. And then you spent the last five years or six years gaslighting everybody that you were getting it done. Mm-hmm. But you're not. Like, not even close. Yeah. Not even close. <laughs> and now you fucked off for 19 weeks. Of course he did. But tearing down the Ontario side of sitter. Tearing down the Ontario Science Center. Oh, that's shit you can get done, though, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said it was going to cost build anything, but million. you can sure tear stuff down. He said $43 million to fix it. Um, that's not actually true, number one. And number two, he spent $43 million on television ads. Yep. And at the time he found out <laughs> that it would be $43 million to fix it and decided not to fix it, $43 million the 43.5 or something like that would have fixed it at the time. Mm -hmm. Now that will only sort of like cover up what is there until they have time to actually bring in a better fix. Well, and, and something, uh, cause, uh, he neglected a public asset. Mm. Something successive to governments to have done this for about like 26, 27 years like this, but he neglected a public asset. Well, something James but, pointed out to me on the weekend. Cause James was here Saturday. He stayed over mm -hmm. Saturday night. Or Friday night, I should say. And uh, Saturday we hung out. Um, something he pointed out to me was that uh, Dundas, you know how they changed the street name? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much that cost, Ontarians? Oh, that costs a lot. $25 million. Yeah. To change a street name. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Why, why didn't you just build some public housing? I'm like, I, I get. No, no, the, the need had it to be changed, but there's no way that needed to cost $25 million. Apparently it did. Yeah, but there's no way. Well, street signs. There are maps, some consultations that need to be had. Yeah, but that's what it, that's what that's the bill. That's what the bill was. Twenty or twenty-five million. I can't remember. Either way, that money could have put been put towards housing. Hmm. You know, could yeah. put could have been put towards many other things. Yeah, I, I personally, I have no problem with with that. I just find it's ridiculous that it costs twenty-five million. There's, there's got to be a cheaper way to change a street name. Well, there is. <laughs> I mean, I'm all here. It's like, I understand, yeah, new maps like this. I mean, probably the biggest expense is the new street signs and having the old ones taken and put up. And there's labor and all that kind of stuff with that, and you have to buy the signs to have them designed. But, I mean, yeah, meetings, I know. I know, yeah, Toronto Dan, it's not changed yet. Well, yeah. But, yeah, 25 mil, it, it just seemed like I could see, like, one or two million, depending on how broad the consultations have to be, but 25? That seems like a lot. But I could be wrong. Toronto is a huge city. Oh, boy. So, yeah. Uh, he's not getting it done. He's tearing down the science center. He's doing it sneakily. He's doing it without any accountability. Um, people are saying that they're going to fight it. Uh, Merit Stiles, in particular, says that she's really going to take the fight. Um, Sorry, 12.7 million. 12.7 million. Um, yeah, okay. I, given, you know, the way government stuff works, I can kind of see that. Still seems like a lot. <laughs> um, There's an so yeah. of inquiry regarding the renaming of Dundas Street because of the amount of money that was spent. <laughs> Pardon? There's an um, there's an administrative inquiry regarding renaming Dundas Street. Yeah, yeah, I figured that. Yeah, th that's what I mean. I figured that there would have to be something like that. That just yeah. seems like a, a striking, strikingly high amount to accomplish that. This the only reason I say that, and I know I know prices have changed since I last did this, but um, I have had some experience with some with public consultations and. Just 25, I know there was some complexity with it because the indigenous community was a, was particularly involved in this one. Um, but yeah, I'm, but I've had a chance to work even in consultations that way. And this, the, yeah, this, this seems like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we are getting close to the time that you have a hard out, Mr. Yes. Grizzly. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, so yes, 
there's some other stuff. Uh, we will keep it till tomorrow. But yes, there's been some more stuff on the foreign interference file that's come out. Oh, yes, the one that we can't uh, go over. Uh, Nenshi. Yes, he is now the NDP leader in the province of Alberta. He won by yes. a landslide. A landslide. I mean, it wasn't even close. No. He it had wasn't like even a contest. He had five digits and everybody else had four. Yeah. In there. So, um, what was it 62,000? Something like that. 60, 80, almost 62,000 votes. Yeah. And 80, yeah. Yeah. 62,000 votes or something like that. And um, the next closest was 8,000 or something. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not even. <laughs> It's not even, not even close, nothing, not even yeah, in the he, realm of close. Yeah. 86% of, uh, the vote he picked up. So, uh, and he is, I think the, the, the leader of a party in Alberta who has gotten the most votes ever to win their leadership. So, uh, that is quite, quite a mandate. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. congratulations. Uh, it seems that uh, from what I've been seeing from the feedback from the party after uh, is that everybody seems to be welcoming him. Uh, some people are trying to make uh, stuff out of uh, politicians, uh, congratulating Rachel Notley on her time because now she's officially exited and welcoming Nenshi. So why pull it up? Like, for example, Christopher Freeland sent a, new, uh, sent a, twi a tweet out saying, you know, like this, congratulations. Oh, why are people getting involved? It's like, no, that's just the natural, normal pleasantries. When a party gets a new leader, all the other parties are supposed to, or at least court for minimum decorum, you know, congratulate the person who's leaving on whatever their term is and wishing a warm welcome and lots of success to the, right? So it's like, it's not getting involved. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to make sure you do not miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. If you scan the QR code that's about to appear, that will bring you to our pod page. And if you are listening, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you would like us to support us in other ways, please make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver YouTube page, which has crossed 3,200. I'm like, geez, Ryan, 3,000. Unreal. Unreal. Thank you, whoever is subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not equipped for this much this is so much joy. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing sunshine into our lives. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, very much, very much. Uh, but please go there and uh, play with all our buttons. That's what they're there for. Like, share, and subscribe. All right. And if you would like to help us in another way, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee.com. K-O-F-I. You know the address. Trip it over my tongue. <laughs> KOFI.com slash uh, uh, true eager, lowercase letters, all one word. Why am I having trouble? It's like I don't want to get paid today. <laughs> but if you go there and make a donation, you will find our Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. And uh, that will uh, help us present this show to you. Thank you so much for all your support from because democracy is something that you do. Like I already mentioned, vote if you're in St. Paul's. Please be kind to and gentle with yourself because it could be a rough world out there, kids and cups. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Yeah, try my new cologne, Wet Dog Desire. Ooh, la la. C'est magnifique et très chic. This does not smell good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right she she was playing in puddles this morning and splashing about so she kind of kind of smells well wet dog yeah yeah all right uh mr Rizzi, uh let's play the clip before we go and we won't do an easter egg because okay. i found the one we'll leave on a, we'll leave on a happy note okay uh, i'm just pulling the clip up just give me a second here while i do that and it is loading and i have it and okay lola lola settle down, settle down. 
Let me, <laughs> let's play this clip. Reflecting on reconciliation, a National Indigenous Peoples Day, now in its 15th year, Calgarians gather for a symbolic walk along the Bow River. I think it's really important when you're on that journey to reconciliation, like you address the hard parts and acknowledge that they happened and then move forward. For some, this day and this walk is an emotional experience. Absolutely. And I think, um, I think if you don't feel something, um, you know, that's okay too. It's all about learning and being open to the experience. It's really important for me to see the support from our non-Indigenous community, um, if they can understand uh, and embrace um, the culture. Learning, especially when moving forward with reconciliation. Oki, Sixika language, Danse is Cree. Danetara is the Sutina language. Danse, Danche is the Metis language. Ambewastech is the Ayahar Nakota language. And these are all greetings from the Treaty 7 territory. And for some, reconciliation is today and every day. Walking with empathy, walking with compassion, learning from others and uh, coming together as a community. I think it's it's a daily commitment and um, it's beautiful to come together and celebrate as a community at least one day a year and be a part of something like this. In Calgary, Phoenix Phillips, City News. And let's not forget the entire prairies, Manitoba, mm -hmm. Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. Alberta and a portion of British Columbia are all on treaty lands. Indeed. All of them. All of them. All right, Mr. Grizzly. Cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. Ko hyphen fi dot com slash eager beaver. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll see you. <laughs>